time. Yo, Headliner Nation, what is going on? Kyle back with the Fantasy Headliners. Hopefully everybody's doing well out there today. Hopefully week seven has gone well for you so far. Obviously this video drops before Monday Night Football, so maybe some of you don't know the outcomes of your matches yet. But if you do, hopefully you all walked away with a dub on an unfortunately injury riddled weekend lots of big names players going down with injury some we kind of know about already some that we don't and we're going to want to keep an eye on that moving forward so a lot of you may be working the waiver wire this week we've only got two teams on buys this week which is also good not going to have to deal with buy a get in or anything like that again so we can go ahead and take a look at you know Maybe a few guys that we just need to, you know, maybe replace an injured player or, you know, maybe pick up a little bit of slack this week for you. But let's go ahead and kick off the show with the running back position. And if you listened to this show last week, ladies and gentlemen, then you already own Gus Edwards. Now, we were weary about playing him this past week because we didn't exactly know what we would get from him right away. But it's clear my man is back. He wasn't the most efficient runner in the world, only averaging 4.1 yards per carry. Maybe some of that burst acceleration wasn't quite there yet, but he scored twice. Gus Edwards is a guy that if you didn't add last week for some reason, y'all be better running your hind ends to the waiver wire if you have the number one priority and using it on this man. More than likely, he will be a guy at least for the next four to six weeks while we have no J.K. Dobbins, and that could end up being good for fans fantasy owners because then it will allow you all to have an RB1 the rest of the season. Again, on this show last week, I told you all, if he is on your waiver, go get him and get him quickly. Rashad White for Tampa Bay. Now they're going to be playing Baltimore this week. White really just kind of a high risk grab for me right now. I mean, Leonard Fournette is the lead back and this offense hasn't really looked that well, but um, you know, he he led the team with 24 yards. He only had two less carries than what Leonard Fournette did as well. And going up against Baltimore, if Baltimore is able to put up a little bit of points and the offense just isn't as efficient as we would like, maybe we do see Rashad White out there a little bit more in kind of a pass-catching role. Dante Foreman and Chuba Hubbard, both of these guys, just going to re-add him to the list this week. Uh, still looks like Dante Foreman is going to be the lead back. Now, I don't know if the upside is ever going to be there. Yes, he ran for over 100 yards this past week. Does he keep that up on a weekly basis? I have some doubts about that, but we need to keep an eye on Chuba Hubbard still, who for right now, uh, Gus Edward, or excuse me, Dante Foreman probably has more volume than Chuba Hubbard, but if, if Hubbard is able to show some of that athleticism and some of that pass catching ability and help out in that area, then at that point, maybe he does start to see a little bit more time over Dante Foreman. If I had to use a waiver priority on one of them right now, though, to help right now, it would be Foreman. If you're looking kind of long run, I take a look at Hubbard instead. Latavius Murray for Denver might be still sitting around out there for some of you. Stole the goal line, carry, touchdown this past week, but he was really no better on the ground than what Melvin Gordon was. I expect Latavius Murray to continue to see some reps in that offense. If Michael Carter is still out there, then he is the number two priority behind Gus Edwards. With Michael Carter right now, the, the thought is, is that that Brees Hall has an ACL tear. Is that accurate? We don't know as of yet, but if they're saying that's likely an ACL tear, even if it's not, we're expecting significant rehab time anyway. So Michael Carter is going to be the lead back, probably owned, probably owned again in, in more leagues than not out there right now. I, if I took a look at a majority of the, the platforms that looked like he was right around 60 to 65% on most of those, but Brees Hall has been playing so well lately. I think a lot of people started to go ahead and drop Michael Carter from their lineup. And now he becomes one of the top priorities at running back. So if you're, I mean, it's between him and Gus Edwards. If whoever you feel a little bit better with, go with that person. But if you need running back help, this is maybe going to be one of the final times of the season that you'll be able to get it. Dare, Ogbenbale, 
Also, as we like to call him around here, Dare Alawala Bing Bong. It's been so long since I've been able to use that nickname, and I absolutely love it. Last week, he led the team in Houston with seven targets. Nico Collins has gone down with an injury, and this is a team that will continue to play from behind. So if you need yourself a, you know, if you need yourself a PPR. PPR option that in a really tough matchup might need uh, might might get a few targets for you, a little dump passes. Then maybe Dare is our guy the rest of the season. Isaiah Pacheco, look it. I'm gonna put him on here, even though they're on a bye this week. This is why you've got to be careful with the reports that you hear from sources or from you know guys like Tom Pelissario or Adam Schefter that say they have sources. It's just because somebody says Isaiah Pacheco is going to start at running back doesn't mean anything. Now, Nicole Hardman decided out of nowhere to get two rushing touchdowns this past week, so maybe that hurts Pacheco just a little bit, but... He didn't really lead the backfield. Yes, he started. He didn't lead it, though. He only had two more carries in CEH. He didn't get the touchdown. Lost targets to McKinnon. CEH also saw him targets. I, I mean, I like Pacheco, but again, this continues to be a three-way backfield. So am I adding him? Probably not. But I felt like I needed to put him on here because I didn't. People are going to be like, where's Isaiah Pacheco? Another reminder for you all, the same way I told you all to go get Gus Edwards is the same reason I'm telling you all to go get Kyron Williams. Brought him up last week, and this is a guy that could be back very, very soon. And we still don't know exactly what's going to happen with Cam Akers. Is he going to end up playing the rest of the season? Will it be for a different team? Uh, do they keep giving him touches? But if Kyron Williams comes back soon and he starts getting significant touches, he is a guy that could absolutely take over the backfield very, very quickly. Again, our priorities this week, 1A, Gus Edwards, 1B, Michael Carter, 2, Kyron Williams. Let's head on over to the wide receiver section now. Going to kick things off with Donovan Peoples-Jones. Tough matchup against Cincinnati coming up, but he's got 6-plus targets and 70-plus receiving yards in three of his last four matchups. And David Njoku went down with a potential injury this past week that we'll have to monitor. Not only that, but with Deshaun Watson's return creeping closer and closer, he's a guy that could see some big play potential as we creep down the rest of the season as well. DJ Moore for Carolina. It's weird that I'd be talking about him as a waiver wire pickup going into Week 8. But I feel like we kind of need to because a lot of people probably dropped him last, last week. And if he did, I would grab him and pick him back up. Now, are we going to see the 10 targets, 7 receptions, 69 receiving yards, 1 touchdown performance that we saw last week? No, we're not going to see that every single week. But a really good performance from DJ Moore could only lead to more potential suitors in a trade, and that is why I want to hold DJ Moore. If he gets traded, then at that point, we've potentially – increased his volume and now you're holding on to him two guys for Detroit Khalif Raymond and Jamison Williams now I have been a guy that has been saying I don't know if I'm necessarily excited to go get Jamison Williams this year yes and in, in, in next year and years down the road Jamison Williams is going to be an absolute stud however now that we've got another injury to Amon Ross St. Brown and now that we see the offense continuing to struggle after being so good to start the season Josh Reynolds also being banged up. Khalif Raymond and Jamison Williams both make it on this week. And if I had to pick one, I would grab Jam Jamison Williams and stash him for right now. When will he show up? I don't know. That is yet to be seen. When will he make an impact? Also, I don't know. That's yet to be seen. For both of those guys, though, Jameson Williams is the one that I definitely trust long-term with Khalif Raymond maybe as an emergency option this week. Darius Slayton and Wandell Robinson are both going to make it this week going up against Seattle. Darius Slayton's got that big, big playability, all right? And without a true wide receiver one on this team right now, Caught three of his six targets for 58 yards and a touchdown. I've liked Slayton in the past. He lacks that, or he has that big playability. He's going to be kind of that field stretcher. And when you've got a guy like Wandell Robinson and Barkley underneath, it's always important to note that it only could take a play or two for Darius Slayton to make his fantasy value for you. Now for Wandell Robinson, he did lead the team with eight targets last week, but I don't think he's ever going to be a big play option. He's going to be a PPR option for a lot of you. 
throw him out there, maybe get you six receptions. That would be six points right there. Then he's only got to get you four receiving or 40 receiving yards to become a startable wide receiver. So the receptions could give him a, a safe four, but I don't think he has really that high of an upside. Darius Slayton would be a much higher upside for me. Paris Campbell, I've been waiting on this forever. Paris Campbell is an, an extremely gifted and talented wide receiver, but he spent the first years of his NFL tenure being injured, what felt like all the time. But maybe we're here now. This past week, 12 targets, 10 receptions, 70 yards, and a touchdown. We're coming off a performance the week prior where he had 11 targets. Paris Campbell is looking like maybe now he will be the wide receiver too in this offense with him and Pittman being the guys moving forward. I know for a lot of Alec Pierce truthers who I was starting to jump on board with, that might hurt a little bit, but Paris Campbell is looking like the much better option right now. Marquise Godwin season, actually good one. I'm sorry, Marquise Goodwin season, ladies and gentlemen. I mean, I've always been a Marquise Goodwin fan fan. I like the guy. He's not flashy. He's got that speed though. And he showed it off this past week, 67 receiving yards, two touchdowns, second on the team in targets. DK Metcalf went down with a knee injury. As of this recording, we do not know what it is as of yet. So Marquise Goodwin will likely be the wide receiver too on that team. DeAndre Carter going into the bye, bringing him up because of the twisted ankle of Mike Williams. Don't know what it means as of yet. Keep an eye on that situation. George Pickens, they're going to get Philadelphia this coming week, which will be a tough matchup. But he's, I mean, he's looking like between him and Pat Fryermuth will be the number ones for Kenny Pickett. Also, he's probably the most talented wide receiver on the team. And then my fan tracks find of the week. I'm going to go with Van Jefferson as a reminder to everybody. He could also be back very soon. And yes, Allen Robinson hasn't done anything, but Matthew Stafford has that connection with Van Jefferson. I like Van Jefferson, the field stretcher. Je definitely a guy like I mentioned with, mentioned with Darius Slayton a minute ago. Maybe he doesn't get a ton of volume, but he only needs a couple of catches a day to make his fantasy value. And I think bringing back that big time field stretcher is going to be very good for this offense. And Stafford's going to look his way early and often at the tight end position. We're going to keep an eye on Juwan Johnson. For those of you that took heed of my advice last week and said, if you're scrounging for fantasy points, if you don't have a good usable tight end, grab Juwan Johnson. I like the opportunity. Two touchdowns is a high risk streaming option last week. Absolutely love it. For him, really, are we going to play him moving forward? It depends on what happens with Thomas and Landry. Harrison Bryant for Cleveland. Want to bring him up because I mentioned earlier, David Njoku went down with an injury. No word yet on the severity of it, so we'll keep an eye on Harrison Bryant over the next couple of weeks. Cade Otten, he's a guy that last week, 64 receiving yards. Probably won't see a ton of targets. Not a guy that I expect to see like seven, eight, nine targets a week, especially with Mike Evans and Chris Godwin. But Gage looks to have re-injured his hamstring. The offense as a whole just isn't really flowing that well. And he's a guy that, hey, if we get into the red zone, we start to look his way a little bit. He starts to replicate some of that fantasy value that we've seen Tom Brady do in the past with tight ends. But again, he's no Rob Gronkowski. That relationship is just different. I'm not banking on huge upside numbers. And for Greg Dulcich, again, a guy I brought up last week for everybody to take a shot at. If Ripon's the starter for the next couple of weeks, then absolutely. I think Greg Dulcich is a guy that has a very, very safe floor. Maybe not a high ceiling. It's nine targets this past week, though. Nine targets is, is really good to see for him. Six receptions and then 51 receiving yards. Let's take a look at some streaming options, though, and we're going to kick it off with the quarterback position. P.J. Walker for Carolina, they're going to get a good matchup with Atlanta this coming week. They just got blown up by Cincinnati. I'll be, you know, that's a, a different, very different offense than what Carolina has, but they just got blown up by Cincinnati. Walker was 16 of 22 for 177 yards and two touchdowns against Tampa Bay, though. So P.J. Walker could be a good streaming option for you this week. And Daniel Jones is kind of a high-risk, high-reward matchup for you going up against Seattle. Really, I'd be banking on him to kind of replicate some of those rushing yards that we saw this past week and maybe score another touchdown. Defensive special teams, really only two that I'm pinpointing this week. Baltimore's a little... Listen, Baltimore against Tampa Bay. Tampa Bay, 
they could turn it on at any point, but they're like third worst in the league in touchdown conversion percentage right now. They're not playing well. And this is a team that a lot of people gave up on and sent back to the waivers because they weren't playing that good. So they might be readily available in a lot of your leagues. Now they get a Tampa Bay team that's been struggling like crazy. Baltimore could be a good option this week. And then Jacksonville going up against Denver. Wilson may not be back this week. Would that matter anyway? And we know the Jacksonville front can get after the quarterback a little bit. I like the opportunity here. What about some players to drop? And maybe not necessarily some players we're dropping right now, but some guys that we're not starting moving forward either. The Duve, Devin Duvernay, I would go ahead and drop him right now. The touchdowns are all washed up and he doesn't get the target. Targets. Drake London and Kyle Pitts for Atlanta. Not dropping either of these guys just yet, but they are going to the bench for me for the time being. The problem with Atlanta is they always want to run the football. It doesn't matter if they're far behind, like against Cincinnati. They want to run the ball 30, 35, 40 times a game, regardless of the score. That is greatly limiting the upside of Kyle Pitts and Drake London. They're both heading to the bench for right now. Robert Wood. Woods is slowly becoming a guy that I will probably drop and move on from. That offense is really kind of a spread it around offense, and then we'll run it at you with Derrick Henry. Alec Pierce for Indianapolis. Let's tar less targets this past week, not only than Paris Campbell, not only than Michael Pittman, but also Jonathan Taylor and Naheem Hines. That is not good for his value. And with as good as Paris Campbell's been playing right now, Alec Pierce could be seeing the waivers here pretty soon. Romeo. Doobs, Watkins is back. Tunyon's getting a lot healthier. The offense overall doesn't look good. Started to buy into the guy, but he hasn't done anything since. We might be moving on fairly quickly here. Are we all moving on from every New York Jet wide receiver? Maybe not everybody. Maybe losing Brees Hall is good for their value moving forward. We'll have to keep an eye on that, though. We'll have to keep an eye on that. Garrett Wilson is really the only guy right now that I want to own, and I just want to put him on my bench just in case. Corey Davis has been eh, not an intriguing option all season, but, you know, a safe option at times. Elijah Moore is not even on the field right now because he's upset that he's not getting any targets. And again, Garrett Wilson's got the big play potential, but they're spreading the ball around to everybody, and then they're running the football. But again, maybe not having Brees Hall does change that a little bit. And then Brandon Cooks for Houston, another guy that maybe I'm not drawing dropping right now, but I'm definitely not starting uh, for the time being, I don't think, just because, I mean, how can you? The guy's only getting you six, seven points a week in half PPR formats. Really can't keep going with that. They're just not scoring. He's not scoring, and that's an issue. Ladies and gentlemen, there's your waiver wire show heading into week eight. Hopefully you all had a great week seven. Hit that like button for me on the way out. It's free. It's easy to do. It helps out the videos a ton. Leave a comment down below if there's somebody that you're thinking about dropping, but you're not necessarily sure of. I'll try to answer as many as possible. And then, of course, if you're new here, well, you've got to hit the subscribe button and become a part of Headliner Nation today. Ladies and gentlemen, I appreciate you all. Thanks so much. Stay healthy. And I'll catch you all on the next episode of the Fantasy Headliners.